right, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to our December PTO meeting. We have an exciting agenda today. I do want to say in advance that this agenda does have a lot of student participation, which is exciting. It's a little easier when we're all in one room as opposed to all over the building doing this virtually. So if it's a little bumpy, that's totally expected, but we're excited to hear from some updates about some clubs after we have some PTO updates from our president and some of our other PTO executive members. So Kyler, I'm gonna transition this part of the meeting to your agenda item. Thank you. Um, thank you everybody for attending this morning. I especially wanna thank the students who are joining us. Um, I know it's hard to take time out of your day, but it's really important that we get to share all the great things that you're doing um, with our parent body. So thank you very much for, for preparing your presentations and taking this time. Um, there's not that much to report on the PTO, except um, we are continuing to take dues if anybody hasn't paid theirs yet. Um, and we are starting to um, uh, organize the events that we always used to do pre-COVID. So I am actually gonna turn um, it over to Jan Scott, who has been very active with TJ and Nurse Lesnick to prepare the um, blood drive to, um, that's gonna be happening this month. And I want her to share with you what's going on and um, how you can help support that. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. We're excited to partner with the American Red Cross and host our student blood drive on site December 17th from eight to two. New this year, 16 year olds can donate with written parent permission. Um, last week, TJ sent an email with the permission form that you can print off and send in with um, your student either on the day of the event or to Ms. Lesnick early. Um, unfortunately, we can't take um, parental permission over the phone on the day of the event. So it's really important if you want your student to donate um, that you send in the permission form early or with them on the day of the event. There are several ways that parents can support the blood drive. We are looking for food and drink donations and also parents to staff the food table um, to help with keeping that organized while the students donate. A sign up genius was included in uh, Mr. Salutary's email last week and he will include it this week. So we have several spots available and would love the parent participation. Uh, thanks for helping us with this event. And if you have any questions, just email us at danielhandpto at gmail.com. Thanks. And thank you for that update. We are, we're excited to be back in business with blood drives. You know, we obviously weren't able to do those last year. So again, if you had my message from Friday and you're interested in signing up, those links are available. I will certainly include that same message again as a repeat this Friday for a great cause. And, you know, usually we have a lot of students participate. And, you know, again, Jen, thanks for taking this on. I know it's not an easy one to organize. Mr. Belantic does a lot of work behind the scenes helping out and, you know, I'm confident it will run very smoothly and again, a very worthy cause. Kyler, any other PTO updates at this point? No, not at this point, thank you. Awesome, thank you. All right, so one of the things we've been talking about was trying to get students involved in our PTO meetings because obviously they're why we're here. And again, we're all in person, which has been excellent this year. So we are going to spend a chunk of time talking about just several clubs that are at Daniel Hand High School. I'm going to turn it over in a moment to Mr. Bodner and Mrs. Witcher, but I do want to mention that, you know, there are dozens, and that's probably an understatement, dozens of clubs that are at Daniel Hand. We are going to try and highlight several every PTO meeting, just so parents and students have an idea of what's offered and, you know, the the presentations will be you know, about five minutes per club. Students will certainly answer some questions if anyone has any for them. And then Mr. Bonner and Mrs. Witcher will wrap up this component. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to our two assistant principals, Mrs. Witcher and Mr. Bonner, and then our students and our club advisors will play a big role in today's meeting. Thank you, Mr. Sanitary. Um, so we actually have, um, he was close, he said several dozen, we have about over 50 clubs um, right now that are up and running. And that number changes all of the time because as he had said previously, students um, start new clubs all the time. So we're, what we're going to do today is we're going to feature 
um, several clubs from the CTE department. Um, sometimes when you see a club or you just see the name, you might be thinking like, what is that? So one of the first clubs we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about the money club. Um, but if you, by its name, you might not know what that, what do they do? Why, what are their meetings like? Um, what fun events do they have? Um, so some of our students are going to help explain a little bit more about each of the clubs that we have. Uh, so to start, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Tommaso, and he has several students that are going to be talking about the Money Club, um, DHHS Live, and the Robotics Club. Awesome. Good morning. Thanks for having us today. I have three bright students here with me this morning. Well, as Ms. Witcher said, we'll tell you about the Money Club, DHHS Live, and Robotics. I'm going to turn it over to Sam Wheeler. He's one of our leaders in the money club and he has a presentation i'm so going to take over screens and try to share my screen with you so he can do that and then he'll take it away uh, all right hello everyone okay um so i i'm sam wheeler and i run money club um with patrick Hennessy. um so okay so the origins of a club. Um, it used to be run by Sean Burke, um, who graduated last year. Um, and I went to this club as a freshman and a sophomore because I was um, interested in the stock market. Um, but then Sean stopped, stopped running it. I think it was last spring. So Patrick and I decided to revive it because um, we had both gotten involved in the stock market during COVID. Um, and we just wanted to per pursue our interest further. Um, so we thought the club was a good way to do it. Um, so what do we actually talk about? We obviously talk about money, but the stock market, day trading, cryptocurrency, um, managing risk, and then anything else that um, anyone wants to talk about, um, we were like open to um, really any topic. Um, and we can, if, if our members want to talk about something, then we can make a slideshow about it um, and then present it in the in the meeting or they can even make a slideshow about it and teach us something new that we didn't know about. Um, so yeah. Um, so what does a typical meeting consist of? So first we just introduce the topic of the day um, and we, we try to put it into simple terms and basic words so everyone can understand. Um, and then after that, we kind of try to apply the topic and have, we have an example and we show how the topic can relate to just real life. Um, and then at the end, we'll have a Kahoot um, where everyone can kind of test their knowledge um, in a fun and repetitive way. Um, and that's always fun to do that at the end. Um, so okay, the next slide. The next slide is actually a slide from the, our last meeting. Um, and this is an example of um, what we did in the last meeting where we talked about the stock market and day trading. So this is Tesla stock. Um, and if you don't know anything about Tesla, it's pretty crazy. Um, and it's been going up a lot in the past month or two. Um, so Patrick found, this is Tesla stock and, um, and Patrick took a picture of their graph and then he pointed out little details and key points in the graph. Um, if you look at the white arrows, they're pointing to different things. And it probably makes like no sense to anyone, but we try to explain it. Um, in, uh, in, our, in our meetings. And I'll just tell you guys what um, the, the arrow, the arrow on the left. So the arrow on the left that's pointing down um, at that kind of green hill sort of. Um, so that's what you, um, we call um, candlesticks. So the green candlesticks are all above um, the blue line, which is a short term moving average line. Um, so this would be a good play um, to buy at the beginning when the first um, green candlestick breaks above the blue line, and then you'd sell up at the top when the first candlestick breaks below. Um, so that is just one example of um, what we talk about, and we get into the way more detail in the club and, and talk about different plays and indicators and um, how we can use those to our advantage to make money. Um, so yeah, that's just one example of what we did in the club. So that's it. Any questions? No questions? Uh, awesome. Sam, I have a quick question for you. 
So if I missed a meeting here or there, would it still be valuable to attend as a student? What do you mean? Like if you couldn't go one week or like, yeah, if, well, if you couldn't go one week, usually it's like the first couple of meetings that we've had have been um, like basic base understanding, I guess, of the stock market and day trading, which we have to talk about a lot. So the first couple of meetings are important, but when we get later on in the year and last year in the spring, when we got later on, we'd, we'd kind of zoom in on stuff. Like we talked about crypto, I think. Um, I think we're going to talk about penny stocks. And if you make meetings like that, it's okay because it's just a zoomed in topic. But the first couple of meetings are important to get to. Great, thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh yeah, and also we meet anyone for anyone who wants to come in and just stop by. We meet Thursdays, um, two o'clock in Mr. Tomaso's room, uh, room one fourteen. So, I'd like to introduce to you now, Andy Goodrich is going to talk about DHS Live. Hello. Um, so I'm Annie Goodrich and I took the DHHS Live um, uh, club and I took kind of transformed it into DHHS Sports Center, which is it's sort of similar where you really focus on sports. Um, and yeah, it's sort of like a podcast. So um, before the DHHS Live, was very student run and um, it kind of fell apart after my freshman year. Um, and we kind of, it wasn't really a club anymore. And I wanted to bring athletes in and kind of give them a voice um, to express, you know, what they want to, um, you know, tell everyone about and really let them um, kind of give the athletes another perspective and show other people that, you know, they do, you know, other things and they're not just athletes. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, so we meet, um, in Mr. A's room, and we use all the equipment there to, um, you know, produce a live production. And we want to really um, show everyone how to use the equipment, and it gives everyone um, like another skill that they can um, use later on, depending on what they want to go into. Um, and yeah, I mean. That's pretty much the basics of the club. Um, we meet every Monday and we try to produce an episode. Um, obviously, right now, um, we are just starting um, the winter season, so we don't have any games going on right now. But as soon as the games start up, we are going to um, start producing episodes. And obviously, as the uh, club progresses, we're going to add more um, you know, like little segments um, to really get to know the athletes. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it about the HHS Sports Center. Annie, will the public have access to view the live shows or recorded shows? Uh, yes, definitely. We're gonna, um, we have an Instagram and you can watch from there. Um, and Mr. A, we're gonna try and get him to push it out to all the teachers and everyone else so that they can keep an update on what's going on with the HHS uh, sports. Great, thank you. Anyone have any questions for Annie and the DHHS Live? Annie, I just have one question. If a student hasn't taken um, Mr. A's class yet, so they're brand new, um, well, like what, at what entry point should they join the club? Like, can they, do they need to have a background or can they come in if they've never taken his class before?
I don't, I can't really hear you that well. I'm sorry. Can you like, I don't know if it's, I, th I don't think you're muted. I just don't think I can hear you that well. And he will go through and show you how to use all the equipment. And um, especially if there's like a specific point that you want to go and work on, if you want to work on the writing part of the episode, we can, you know, help you with that. If you want to do the more technical and work with the cameras and, um, you know, we're definitely going to try and get some outside footage. We, we're going to try and use, um, you know, from all the cameras that are on the field, we'll use that to um, put into the episode. And there's a lot of different things that um, people can do and they don't have to necessarily have all the experience from a serious class. Great, thank you. A quick, a quick question, because I may have missed part of this is, how does a, a, a student find out? Like, where do they go? Their sign up sheets or go online? How, I'm sorry, I missed that part of how students are aware, where, where to ask or where to check it out. Hi, this is Brian Bodner, one of the assistant principals. Um, we will show you, I'll screen share a little bit later after the clubs are done to show on our website where you could find a description of our clubs. It's listed under the student section. And um, as frequently as clubs meet, we've asked them to include that as well. And it also includes the advisor for students to reach out to. But I will also show that to everyone at the end of the presentation. Thank you. You're welcome. Annie, do you just want to share when DHH um, live meets? Move a little closer, Annie, and probably a little louder. <laughs> For some reason, the audio is not working. I think you said Monday, but I couldn't make out what Monday in Mr. A's room. Am I on the right track? Maybe try unsharing the screen. That might clear up any technology glitch. Uh, it's going to be uh, every Monday after school, um, right at 2 o'clock in Mr. A's room. Perfect. Great, Annie, and no pressure, but when DHS Live is up and running comfortably, you know, feel free to start thinking about, is there any way we ever could have students announcing live games on our NFHS network? That would be really exciting because I know a lot of people have accounts and watch our games live, but you only get the sound of maybe the fans, but that could be a, a really cool next step. No pressure now, but something to think about. Next up, I have Patrick Kennedy, who's going to tell you about the Robotics Club here at Daniel Hand and play around with the robot a little bit. Hi, everybody. Um, I'll be talking about the Robotics Club at Hand. Um, I am currently a senior uh, here at Hand, and I've been on the robotics team since I was a freshman. Uh, the Robotics Club meets twice a week on Wednesday and Thursday right after school um, in the uh, robotics room. I'm not sure exactly what room number it is, but we, uh, we stay as late as four o'clock sometimes. Um, and basically what the club is about is we are associated with VEX Robotics, um, which is a, a robotics association that every year um, releases a game that robots, robots are tasked to play um, and they give different challenges and different rules. Um, and yeah, so every year they uh, release a game and we build a robot that plays that game and competes and stuff. Um, so in a second, I'll show you some of the things that our robot this year will do. Um, and starting in November, there are competitions around the state that we attend. Um, and normally at these competitions, there's over like 40 teams that um, compete. And there's a qualification and then a, um, uh, an elimination round. So just recently we had a competition, uh, our annual home competition at hand. Uh, there were 38 teams that attended from around the state. Six of them were from um, our robotics club at hand. And one of the teams at hand actually made it to the semifinals, which was very successful. Um, and in the robotics club at hand, there are multiple teams that compete. 
So we're one big club with many, many members. Um, and there's six individual teams this year um, that compete. And each team is made of about four to six members. So if you're, um, if, if, if anyone wants to join, they can join the, join in the existing team or they can create a new team. Um, and each team builds their own robot um, and has their own um, design and code and everything. But um, we all kind of collaborate together and discuss experiment solutions and ideas. Uh, and it's very common that students take the robotics engineering class at our school. Um, and then they're very interested in that. So then they like, I want to do more with this. I want to join the club. And then they can compete in real competitions like we do. Um, however, that's not always the case. Um, there's many students that have never taken the class, um, such as myself, um, who just were interested but never actually got uh, signed up for the class. And you can definitely still get involved. Uh, but in, in addition to building the robots, we also do, um, we also program them, um, which can be as simple or as advanced as your team would like it to be. And then we also document um, our design process and the changes we make along the way. So I'm gonna do a quick demonstration of, the, of our robot this year. Um, I don't know if you can see, but this is a robot this year. Um, and as you can see, it drives around. It has um, uh, a lift here and a way to grab the goals and a lift on the back um, that works like that. So I'll grab a goal for you uh, to show how it works. Yeah, that's basically our robot. Um, and every team comes up with their own design to accomplish the goals and much different tasks. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer. We, we hosted a VEX competition in November, very well attended. It was actually a lot of fun to come. Are you participating in several more throughout the state this year? Yeah, so, so far we've been to three competitions. Um, the first one, I forget where it was, then it was hand, and then we went to Weston. Um, we're going to go to another competition on the 18th of December, which is in Massac, Connecticut. And then I believe there's two, three, or maybe four more. And um, in the past, we've actually qualified for a regional event, which two years in a row was uh, canceled due to COVID. Um, but hopefully this year we'll qualify for a regional as well. Um, and then maybe get advanced to the world, um, maybe. <laughs> Excellent, and nice job under pressure, live Zoom to operate that robot so efficiently. Very impressive. I, I'm not the driver, but thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> Anyone have any questions for our robotics club? Uh, what was the name of the game for this year? Is it? Um... Yeah, so it's called Tipping Point. That's um, what I thought. Okay. Um, DRC I think I have the ability to put, I don't know, Mr. Study Terry, because it's um, recorded, but I could pop the, the link in the chat if anyone is interested or wants to see what the game actually is itself. There is a, a pretty cool um, little link that just explains the game. Why don't you send me the link and I could add it with my weekly message. Perfect. DJ, can I ask a quick, Patrick? Of course. If somebody was interested in just the programming side or just the building side, is there, is there still room for them to be part of this club? So, uh, since the team is a 
student kind of takes on their own role, whatever they want to do. I mean, some like me students do it all. Um, I'm personally like specialized in like programming. I do a lot of the programming, a lot of the, a lot of the building. Um, if you want to even see what you guys like, you can try different things. So if there's no more questions, that wraps up the three clubs from the CTE department that we're featuring today. Um, if anyone else has a question, you can definitely jump in now. All right, so thank you, Mr. Tommaso, and for the students that participated today, Annie, Sam, and Pat, thank you guys so much. Thank you, everyone. At this time, um, pinch hitting for student council, which was on the agenda, is our French club. And Mrs. Merkel and students are going to describe what our French club does here at the high school, when they meet, and their upcoming event. Um, hello, so we are going to share our screen. Hopefully it works. Um, share. Uh, okay. All right, bonjour. Uh, my name is Bella Vejar. And I'm Robbie Washburn. And we're the co-presidents of the Hand French Club. So what is French Club? French Club is a club that celebrates and explores French Francophone culture and language. Our inclusive club is meant for everyone, whether you take a French class or not. Our goal is not only to teach eager students about Francophone culture, but also to transform them into leaders and, under, and change makers. Uh, we encourage underclassmen to become leaders in our club, and we currently have a freshman named Alexa, who is our treasurer. So what has French Club accomplished so far? Throughout, throughout our time at hand, the French Club has run numerous exciting events from making a French meal for the Ronald McDonald House in New Haven, or creating a thrift for Haiti sale uh, that collects charity, uh, <laughs> donated clothing and um, sold it at a thrift sale. And we uh, got the proceeds and donated it to d disaster victims in the Francophone country of Haiti. Um, and we throw exciting parties like the um, Halloween party that incorporated French culture and music. However, we are most proud of our tradition of visiting the Polson French Club in order to foster learning and inspire students to take French classes and join the high school French club. And a couple of weeks ago, we actually visited Polson and did a scavenger hunt with the middle schoolers. This was especially exciting for us too because when Robbie and I were in Polson, we were in the Polson French Club and we frequently would do activities with hand. Um, like I remember in eighth grade, they came in, made truffles with us, and they talked to us about what life was like at the high school. It was kind of those important experiences what? that let us join and now become leaders who want to continue that tradition. Um, so what is next for us? Um, so this Friday, December 10th, um, we are fortunate enough to have Jacques Dupont come in as a guest speaker. Um, this being a time right before college applications are due, many seniors need motivation and a brighter outlook on the possibilities of what is soon to come. Uh, Jacques Dupont is a man of many different passions and is an inspiration to many of our club members. So he's going to be giving us a talk on basically how to find your passions. Um, I know some of you probably know he has cooking, art, and it's just kind of going to be really exciting for us. Um, so this is our next big event, but we also have plans all the way up to spring. Um, during third trimester, we are planning on doing a Dîner en Blanc or the d Dinner in White. Um, this is a famous event in France where a secret location is given out and a party gets together dressed in all white and has a large picnic. We are hoping to do something similar with our French club members um, as an end of the year celebration. And until then, we will keep doing fun weekly activities like writing poetry and making paper mache. Um, uh, merci beaucoup. <laughs> um, and visit us every Friday in room 246, which is Madame Merkel's room. Um, just letting everyone, all the parents, you know, we do have a lot of members that have other commitments, whether it is an out of school band or sports. So it's not necessary for students to come to every meeting. Every week, we typically have a couple new members as well. Um, French club meetings usually run for 30 to 40 minutes, and it's an easy club to really get involved in. Thank you, Isabella and Robert. Are there any questions that anyone has for the members of the French Club? Okay, so again, thank you. And want to just 
encourage anyone who would like to attend this Friday's event in the library to um, you know check that out. It sounds like a great event and something that's inspirational. So thank you. Our next presentation is going to be our model United Nations. And Mr. Quirk is the advisor of the Model UN, and he has two students, Max and Isabel, that are going to talk about this on behalf of the group. So hi there, um, I'm Isabel and this is Max, and we're from Model United Nations. In Model UN, we learn about other countries and their challenges, and then we talk as a group about solutions and uh, work to collaborate on creating solutions that take into account the perspectives of many countries. Um, so in Model UN, we prepare for conferences, which are where we meet with students from other schools to talk about specific issues, and each student represents a different country. So you have to learn all about your country and about what they think, and then at the conference, you're not representing your own beliefs, you're representing the beliefs of your country. So it's a little bit of role playing and a little bit of creative thinking and a lot of problem solving. And it requires a lot of communication and teamwork and public speaking skills. So during our club meetings, we work to develop all of those skills. We practice debating and we practice um, improv improv improvisational. Yeah, improvisational. Say, yeah, yeah, speaking. And um, and we also work on writing position papers, which are these like kind of essays that you write um, before the conferences to explain your country's perspective on a given topic. And um, yes, we're sir. working on really developing a strong community of students who really care about international issues. Yeah, so I also do debate actually. And uh, one big difference between Model UN and, and debate is that debate, there's two sides. You're trying to get one side. Model UN is very much more uh, collaborative, right? Everyone's trying, everyone has their own goals, but it's a lot of uh, working with other people to make sure that everyone gets what they're trying to achieve and everyone gets what they want, right? So it involves a lot more community when you actually go to these conferences. Now, on a typical year, we would usually go to somewhere around like four, if not more conferences every year. Now, after COVID, things slowed down a little bit. However, conferences did move online. We still did attend some. And uh, we're our, actually doing yeah. one this weekend for our new students, yeah. which is it's called a novice conference, which means that it's all new students who are getting their feet in public speaking and testing out the waters model UN before diving into a bigger and more stressful conference. Yeah. So our biggest conference every year is uh, YMON, Yale Model United Nations. It's somewhere around late January, typically. 18th to 22nd. 18th to 22nd, thank you. Um, and it has over 1,800 students, right, from, I believe, 40 over 40 countries. Yeah. yeah that uh, all congregate. This year, it is online because of the pandemic. But in past years, you've had students from all over the world. I've met people from, like, Malaysia, Indonesia, uh, Micronesia, that have all just flown in to all uh, collaborate. And it's also just a really good way to meet new people because it's a four-day conference. You're not spending the whole time just always talking business. You get to interact socially with other students as well from different backgrounds. Yeah, so the best part about Model UN is that it's a great opportunity with a community of passionate and uh, inspired young students. You get to interact with other cultures and experience other perspectives in a way that we don't always get to do in our classes at hand. Um, so it's a really wonderful experience, and I think that's a lot of what students take away from it, is seeing other cultures and seeing other perspectives and um, learning to make solutions within the confines of those perspectives. Okay. That's about it. Any yeah. questions? Um, I have a question. Um, th this may sound silly because um, you wouldn't be giving the presentation otherwise, but is it too late for someone to join, and given that this weekend is the, um, you know, your your novice, um, of course, I not. guess, event. That... Students so, join. Go ahead. Students join all throughout the year. Our meetings are rather like informal. Mm -hmm. It's more of checking in each week, and each week we'll have a discussion topic. Um, sometimes we'll be talking about 
debate skills or writing a position paper, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, but those, they're just like little boosts of knowledge, but lots of students don't come to the meetings at all and they just come to the conferences. So students just pop in when they're able. Great, thank you. Yeah, of course. We still have students joining. Like we yeah. had new students just join just last week, like right before exams. So we take new students anytime. Um, but if that's it, um, we meet in room 308 every Thursday, Thursday right after school from 2 to 2.30. Thank you, Isabel and Max. And I would just say that, you know, it's a tremendous club. It's one that pre-pandemic students had an opportunity, as Max described quite well, to go to large conferences. And they would, I, conferences I know in the past, besides being held at Yale, were held at UConn. I know University of Pennsylvania was another location at times and gave students a great opportunity to, um, again, not only, you know, experience the, um, the process of essentially representing a country in the United Nations, but to also mingle with students from around the world and just a, a, a tremendous opportunity for students. So thank you very much for that, you know, explanation. And again, we want to encourage anyone who may be interested, as the group said, to come out at any point this year. Thank you again. Our next presentation is the Eco Club. The advisor of the Eco Club is Mrs. Bracco. Um, she will be joined by um, Mrs. Brown, I believe, maybe not. I see a bunch of students on camera, but I know that um, at this time, the Eco Club wanted to do their presentation. Thank you. Okay. Hello, we are Maya and Brianna, the two presidents of Eco Club. The club is a student uh, is student led with the help of Mrs. Bracco. Each year we pick um, like one or two big projects to tackle that year. And this year, our big one was the Pollinator Pathway Garden. With the help of master gardeners in the town, Mrs. Brady and Mrs. Dark, we had a garden plan, like where to buy the flowers, where's the best place to do so, what flowers we're buying, where to do it, how to do it. And we finally picked our spot, our spot, which is kind of off to the shed. As you can see, we laid our mulch already. So um, now we just have to wait till planting season to finally get and plant our flowers. So in the meantime, we would like to share with you our next um, big project we're tackling, which is Team Seas. The goal of our project is to raise money for the organization Team Seas, which vows for each dollar you give, a pound of ocean, a pound of plastic is cleaned from our oceans. This project is a great way to get our student body excited about cleaning and taking care of our planet. Our club wants to collect money by having a raffle where someone can buy a ticket for $2 for one ticket or $5 for three tickets to enter the chance to win $20, a $20 or $10 Ashley's gift card. The collecting of the money will be done um, to, today. We're yeah, starting sorry, collecting today. money today and will be done through the rest of the week. Our goal is at the end of this week is to raise um, up to $300. Our club, is, um, a wonderful, uh, our club is a wonderful way to get the student body excited about caring and taking care for our environment. So thank you for your time and listening to us today. Yeah, we meet in Ms. Bracco's room on Mondays, um, which is room 226, and anyone can join at any time. We're always welcoming new students. Yeah. Any questions, if you have any? So thanks Thank for the you, girls. Hold on one second, Mr. Bodner. Sorry, I have a contact from the class of 1974 who's reached out to me and wants to plant some trees on campus. So I might bring your club into that mix because of the great work you've been doing. So I'll reach out to Mrs. Breco as well to start that process. So great job and sorry to cut you off, Mr. Bodner. No, again, thank you, girls, and thank you for taking on um, a great cause as well. I know that the video that showed the, the cause that you're representing um, was shared with us. And um, again, it's, it's terrific to see that they're trying to clean up the oceans. And again, it looks quite worthwhile to see. Our, have a, hopefully our students will also support it. So again, thank you. And um, any of the parents, if you guys want to donate, you can donate at... Um, Hashtag DHS um, Team Seas. So, yeah, one dollar is one pound, right? <laughs> and we can see if you do under that link, we can see how much our school has collected. So, if you're going to donate, yeah. So, great. so far, we've picked up 52 pounds of trash out of the ocean. So, we're really proud of that. <laughs> 
Thank you again. So at the start of the presentations, one of the things that I had mentioned that I wanted to share with everyone um, is momentarily I will share my screen and show you where you can find our clubs on the DHHS website. But I also just wanted to make sure that parents were aware that a student can start a club here at hand at any time. We have a formal process. A student simply needs to come to our main office and um, request a new club application form. And on that form, they would list the name of their club, its purpose, and they need to have identified an advisor. And at that after they complete that information, they would um, you know, meet with Mr. Salutary. And if it's not a club that we have essentially a duplicate of, or it's not um, something for you know, some reason, uh, you know, usually they're all approved, but if there was some reason, perhaps that there's, again, a con it would be kind of a conflict of interest would be the only thing I think wherever um, you know, we've pointed out that we have something so similar to perhaps work with them, but it's, it's a great process and something that we would encourage students if there's something that we, you know, we don't have at hand that they want to start, that they, you know, go through that process and find an advisor. So at this time, I'm going to share my screen and just show everyone where on our school's website they can locate our clubs. So as you can see here on, I just gotta move, adjust my screen. On our um, school website, we have this, the header, the student header, and I'm struggling here with where things are moving on my screen. But under the student header, we can see there's a clubs tab. When we click on that tab, there is, okay, there it is, there is, um, just some great information now that has been added this year for each of our clubs. And I will um, click on the art club, for instance, and you can see here that it shows the, that the advisor of the art club is Suzanne Gaskell, one of our art teachers. It gives a brief description of the club, where the club meets. And um, again, with this club, you can see it's Wednesday afternoon in room 502 and from 205 to 3 p.m. And again, as you go back you know, to this, you can see that all of our clubs are listed here in the school. At this time, there are um, 57 clubs that are listed here on the website. And again, a great place to direct students if they're looking for something to do after school, they're looking for something that particularly appeals to their interests or just looking to um, get involved in something that seems interesting. So. This is something, again, I want to give credit to Rita Boland, who works um, in our district and is one of our tech specialists that she um, put up for us this year. Mr. Salutary, at this time, I, I believe night in hand updates are on the agenda. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Mr. Bodner. Can you just stop sharing your screen, please, and thank you? Yes. Excellent. So I just wanted to thank Mr. Bodner and Mrs. Witcher for organizing a, a Zoom presentation with a lot of different groups and a really sincere thank you to the students and the clubs and the advisors as well. I know this wasn't easy. That was excellent information that, again, will be sent out to our whole school community later on in the week. And we'll continue to update some clubs as we move forward on a monthly basis. You know, pre-COVID, we had close to 100 clubs up and running. I think we're getting back on track. We always prefer our students to stay after school at 2 o'clock and not leave because there's so many different things to be engaged in. And this is certainly, you know, numerous options. So students especially, excellent job. You're welcome to stay for the rest of the meeting. But if you want to get back to class, feel free to leave the meeting. If I'm using the proper Zoom ter terminology and we'll follow up with your advisors with a thank you as well. That was excellent, excellent information. And again, thank you to all who participated. We are now going to transition back to Kyler who is going to talk briefly about Night and Hand. It's exciting that we have some updates. We were a little bit concerned with the progress of Night and Hand for the end of the year event for our class of 22. But Kyler, are you prepared? I am. I'm not sure if Lisa is here. Lisa, are you on? 
the meeting. Okay, well, I will jump in then. <laughs> um, um, the exciting news is that we have found chairs for the um, Night in Hand 2022. Um, it is um, Beth um, O'Keefe and Lisa Rana have both stepped up to chair. Um, Beth has a senior and sophomore, seniors and sophomore, and um, Lisa has a sophomore. So um, I think them stepping up um, just shows that it's not just senior parents that we look to get involved in Night in Hand. Um, it really takes parents from all classes. Um, and it's actually incredibly important that parents from all classes participate because um, otherwise there's a basically a, a knowledge drain after every year and we're kind of starting over um, from scratch. Um, we, um, yeah, what was to say? Um, I myself have been involved, I think, for eight years since my oldest son was a freshman. Um, and it's taken that long for me to, to get to up to speed on all the parts that I'm involved with. But um, um, parents can be involved in a very small way, um, simply by helping with one of our fundraisers or even the night of Night in Hand. But they can also help um, in bigger ways. We have a number of um, chair positions that are still open. Um, if you look on the parent section of the Daniel Hand website, there's a Night in Hand tab. And um, on that, there's a, um, a sign up chair um, section, a sign of genius. Um, and there's also um, some pictures from last year's Night in Hand and um, <coughs> the senior bo um, picture boards that were prepared last year as well. Um, this year, Night in Hand um, will be moving back inside and we'll be moving back to the overnight format that we've had in the past, which is really exciting. Um, I know the kids are excited um, for that to happen. Um, having said that though, last year, we were able to put on an amazing event um, that happened from seven to 11 um, and the kids still had all the things that they got inside, um, but just an outside format without sleeping over. Um, so I don't um, exactly know what Lisa and Beth had prepared to tell everybody, but I just wanted to direct people to the night in hand, um, sign up genius. Um, they're having meetings um, on Zoom on Thursdays. Um, I'm trying to think um, how to get involved in those. Um, I think going to the website would be the best um, section and, and expressing interest there. Um, you could always reach out to myself, um, either through the PTO email or my personal email at snowmcgarry at yahoo.com if you have any questions. Um, it takes more than a small village to pull off night in hand, both beforehand and the night of. So if you have any time or would like just to get out and to meet people um, from other classes, this is a great opportunity to do so. Thanks, TJ. Does anyone have any just preliminary questions for Kyler about night in hand? I would publicly like to thank Kyler to be involved in Night in Hand for eight years is probably overwhelming. And even when your last child graduates, we probably won't let you go, Kyler, because we're going to need your expertise. With that being said, last year, based on all the restrictions, the event that was you know, afforded the class of 21 was unbelievable. It was really impressive. I thought the kids had a great experience. And it, it is truly exciting to be moving back into the traditional night at hand. You know, we're hoping to move forward, you know, through this pandemic and be able to offer that. And we're again, fingers crossed on the night of graduation, which will be, you know, like it used to be. So thank you for all your efforts. And I do encourage parents to get involved. If we didn't have volunteers, this event wouldn't take place because this is not a school event. You know, the the students when they attend are actually former students because they're all graduates from Daniel Hand at that point. So it's certainly not a school event. We try to assist when possible, but it is truly just a pure parent event and it's a great community support as well. So more to come, we'll probably get the two chairs to a PTO meeting in the future to share a little more information as we get closer, but without question, planning has begun. And that's definitely not like a month long process. This is a month. Um, Mr. Salatari? Yes. One question, and this is from a crazed working parent, um, is like sometimes 
especially we have these meetings, but I can't always remember where to contact people. So the one thing I will just tell you, redundancy, I think for some of us who get sort of overwhelmed, distracted with everyday life, if there's a way like, you know, whether it's getting a hold of PTO with Kyler or as you said, ahead of this committee, if there's any way we can continue to publish emails or contact information, because as you say, oh, go to the website, go to the, believe me, sometimes it's nice just to get that email in your box with huge letters that says contact here. <laughs> That's great. Input, and I'll speak with Kyler. We'll send something out and I'll make it a, just a reminder on my weekly message. So thank you very much. And again, we try and include relevant information. And I know the ease of just clicking on a link as opposed to finding it because our website has a lot of different li links to click on. So definitely appreciate that information. So I had a couple of topics just to talk about in looking at the time for our January PTO meeting. I cannot even believe it's going to be January of 22, right around the corner. One thing just to mention, unfortunately, COVID is starting to spike. I think people have seen that nationwide, statewide, and probably even townwide. Just a couple of reminders, you know, masks are required when you're in the building. You know, our students have done an excellent job. I have to say it's been really impressive. Our staff equally as well. The, we've seen a jump in the district in some cases. We've seen a jump in the number of people who have had a quarantine, unfortunately. And just a reminder, you know, when a student or even a staff member is sick in order to return when they have COVID symptoms, and if you look at the list, the COVID symptoms are just about every symptom you could have if you're sick, we do require that negative PCR test to return. We wanna keep obviously everyone safe we have some options to support students and staff who are unfortunately quarantined at times. I would say those numbers have been minimal over the start of the school year until now, but just this past week, even though it's only Tuesday, Mrs. Witcher, Mr. Bodner, Nurse Lesnick and I have been talking about COVID a lot, and that's not a topic we enjoy talking about. So just stay vigilant. We would love, love to get through this winter and be able to move forward, which I think we have been doing. But I thought I would just take a moment to really remind people of, you know, where this is going. And just one other reminder, if your child or children are vaccinated, if you can share that information with our nurse, that would be great. Because when we do have to contact trace, which we've had to do recently, you know, students who are asymptomatic, who are vaccinated, don't have to quarantine. And that makes it a little easier in the communication and we don't have to stress someone out telling them they have to quarantine until we get that information. If you have specific COVID questions, I am far from an expert. I would certainly recommend reaching out to our school nurse. She has a much higher level of expertise, but it's, I'm not going to be dishonest. It's a little worrisome right now seeing the numbers going up as rapidly as they are. For our January PTO meeting, we have an excellent agenda. There's only a few topics on that meeting. We have Catherine Barden from Madison Youth and Family Services, as she does every two years. She'll be reviewing the most recent survey results from the Search Institute survey that we complete at the high school every two years. Our whole, our entire student body actually participates. It's not a school survey. Again, it's a Search Institute. We just allow Madison Youth and Family Services to run the survey here because they have access to all of our students. That presentation will be about 30 to 45 minutes, dependent upon questions from the audience. And then we'll transition into a really important topic. And it, that's the time of the year is January where Mrs. Witcher will talk about some updates, which are minor this year in the program of studies. And Mr. Bodner will talk about the scheduling process for the 22-23 school year. If you have a senior, obviously you're not going to, you know, have to really worry about that process too much, but Mrs. Witcher is going to just very briefly show you, if you're curious now, where you can access our program of studies, which is an electronic version. Incredible work over the years to transition away from that paper version, where it's probably a good time in a few weeks or especially early January to start clicking on course options and graduation requirements. So Mrs. Witcher, you should have permission to share you want to just give people a quick glance.
sorry, it wouldn't let me unmute, I apologize. Um, so if you're on the Daniel Hand website and you go under general info, um, if you scroll down to where it says program of studies, um, and then within here, there's so much information, but first and foremost, I think it's important to look under the requirements tab and then under the courses tab. So if you go under courses, um, this literally is an overview of every course we offer. So if you're interested in trying to figure out what should my student be possibly taking for social studies, um, you can click on it and then it will take you to all of the courses we offer. And then specifically like a nice little drop down feature It'll tell you what level the course is, what the, the number is, how much credit it is, um, the indicators of it's a graduation requirement, for example, for civics. Um, so I would start exploring this with your student or encouraging your student to explore this sooner rather than later, just so that they can start having conversations with their counselor, conversations with their teachers that they're you know, currently asked their world language teacher, what class do you think I should be taking? Those types of conversations can start to happen at any point. Um, because before you know it, January will be here. And then that is when we actually start the official scheduling process. Thank you, Mrs. Witcher. And you know, just keep in mind, we start the process in January. We end the process basically in January as well. And then we turn it over to Mr. Bodner, who does all the scheduling work behind the scenes. So we share initially in December, but we'll spend a little bit of time in January, you know, on this topic during the first week of January. And we'll spend a lot of time with our students in grades nine through 11. And we also have a plan, as we always do, to work with the incoming eighth graders to make sure the scheduling process is pretty seamless. It will be an electronic only process this year. We did that for grades nine through 11 last year. It was excellent. Eighth grade will do an electronic with support from our school counselors registration process. So. Definitely a great agenda for January. And then we have one minute of plug for a few upcoming events. You know, we do allow fans to attend events right now. You know, I was at the VEX competition. It was exciting. I went to the fall play with an audience. I mean, the requirements are mask. And we do try and separate seats. Obviously, you can sit with family members. That's totally appropriate. But we do have two concerts coming up in December. We have a chorus concert. On Monday, December 20th, it's in the Dining and Assembly Hall. We have a 7.30 start. You know, the students performed last year, but they were recorded and the video was sent out. It's, there is no comparison to perform in front of an audience. So we welcome people to attend. I think it will be outstanding. And then the following evening, which is December 21st, the Jazz Band and Chamber Ensemble at 7.30 as well will be performing. We have snow dates listed, but I don't want to talk about those because I'm pretty sure we're not going to need them this year, you know, knock on wood. And the other piece just to keep in mind is our fall season has wrapped up. A lot of our teams and athletes had great success and enjoyed the experience of playing in front of huge crowds. Winter sports have begun, you know, practices at this point. You know, competition will start within a couple of weeks, you know, for all of the events from basketball to hockey to wrestling and anything I missed in between, fans are encouraged to attend. You know, masks will be required if it's an inside event. And that's you know, a small price to play to support our student athletes who, you know, last year, if you recall, winter sports started with no audience at all. And then we allowed parents of the student athletes to attend from just the home teams. So we're certainly moving towards back to normal. And I have to say our students would really love having an audience and we like to see a lot of people there. They're usually big community events. So as promised, our PTO meetings are always within an hour. If you have a particular topic you would like us to address in the future, feel free to reach out to Kyler or to me via email. And Again, we have a great agenda for January, but we're looking for some new topics to add, you know, as we move forward, as well as some plugs. So I would like to just thank everyone in advance for their attendance today. And I hope everyone has a really safe and happy holiday season. And, you know, it's, it's been a great year thus far. So thank you everyone.